So yesterday I was on FaceTime with my grandma. Uh, she's got, she's kind of high risk, so she's not really getting out of the house. So we're trying to call her a little more than we usually do on FaceTime so she can see us, but really so she can see my daughter. Like, let's be honest, that's all anybody cares about after you become a parent, right? Is your cute kids, not you. And uh, so we're on FaceTime with her yesterday. And uh, there's this doll that my grandma gave my daughter for her birthday last year. And uh, so we're the five got the phone. I'm kind of holding it. She's watching Parker just kind of play and, and without being cute or asked or anything, Parker, my, my daughter just reaches over and grabs the doll and pulls it over and pulls it in real close and and hugs it and rocks it and gives it a kiss and then hugs it again. And, and eventually she she went and reached and grabbed one of her books that was sitting right over. She pulled it over and she's sitting on her lap and she's holding the baby. It's awkward because it's like half the size of her, but but she's holding it and she she turns the pages one at a time in her little book, like she's reading to the baby, just like we read her a bedtime story almost every night. And normally I would feel so joyous about, about something like that. I would just be like excited and, and buzzing with energy. But yesterday I, I felt a, a different, like a heavier emotion. I, I started tearing up and I'll be honest, like I would much rather, I'm really uncomfortable with feelings and emotions. I would much rather ignore that component of my soul altogether. Uh, but my wife tells me not to, so I don't. Um, and so we're talking afterwards. She's asking me kind of what I was feeling. She noticed I was getting emotional behind the camera. And, and I said, you know, I don't know. Um, and as we, we talked, I realized, you know, watching my daughter interact with that toy that my grandma gave her reminded me of all the memories I have with my grandma, all the ways I cherish our relationship, all, all the ways she's given me advice and modeled um, like incredible things like love and acceptance and and resiliency and, and how to follow Jesus and, and how to like, you know, overcome things like fear and, and failure. And all that reminded me of the ways that my, my daughter probably wouldn't have that relationship the way I did. And as we continued to talk, I realized that what was really underneath that was a fear, a fear of losing my grandma, of losing that relationship. Man, fear is a tricky thing, isn't it? I, I think one of the most interesting things about fear is that it it really drives us in a way that most other emotions don't, right? Like like fear, it, it, you, this is this is no secret, right? Every great ad agency or <laughs> military dictator or, or you know uh, like presidential candidate knows that you can use fear to move people. It's it's a very effective but unhealthy way to move a person, right? Fear dr seems to drive us like almost nothing else in our world. Uh, did you know, like, if you look at the Bible from beginning to end and God's interaction with the characters in those stories, th there is no other command he gives more than to not be afraid. Like, do not fear. It's, it's written all throughout those pages. Don't be afraid. Be because I think the truth is, for us to really follow Jesus, for us to interact with God well, to become the people he has always meant us to be, we, we're just destined to run into the things that we are afraid of. <laughs> we're afraid to let go pieces of ourselves that, that are unhealthy. We're afraid to let go of habits that hold us back. We're, we're afraid to let go. And in a time like this with COVID-19, there's a million ways that fear can manifest in ways it wouldn't normally. You know, the, the part of your brain that controls fear is called the limbic brain, the limbic system. It's, it's this um, beautifully engineered piece of brain um, that my wife says makes me angry um, or aggressive or territorial when she says that her dad actually makes her favorite version of her favorite breakfast sandwich. <laughs> See, the, the limbic brain is responsible for our, our fight or flight reactions. The limbic brain is responsible, uh, primarily has been responsible for the survival of humans as a species over our historical uh, our, our historical survival, right? Like this is the, the thing that if we're not careful, 
we'll drive a C. We're, we're given a limbic system for basic survival. Like that fire's hot, don't touch it. Uh, that big wolf is scary, run away from it, right? Like these are the sort of things where a limbic system is helpful, but it's really, really unhelpful when you're dealing with spiritual things, with emotional things. You know, um, fear drives us to all sorts of places too. That's that's the really the real problem with it. I think is that it, it drives us to to be to hoard or to um, to like starve like the people around us emotionally, like to to withhold words. Our fear can can allow us to um, pick fights or to be aggressive or to territorial. It can cause us to or you know motivate us to. Uh, withdraw relationally during a time of social distancing, uh, our fear can take us to all sorts of places that do not help our soul flourish. For me, it's greedy. Man, I get greedy. I just want more and more and I want to save for myself. I want to keep it in. See, that's what was really going on in my soul with my grandma is I, I don't want to lose her. I, I want to keep her for myself uh, because I think there's a, there's a fear deep in there that if somehow I were to lose her that I would not be taken care of, that I would be vulnerable. As God and I talked about it yesterday and this morning, I realized, man, it's that anything like that can be a problem. Why? Because ultimately death is not a barrier for God. <laughs> I mean, Easter was last Sunday. The, the the story of the way God overcame death, right? Like, death is not a barrier for God the way it is for us. And it, that investment in that relationship with my with my grandma is is not wasted. That that it will pay off in many ways throughout my life, and even after I, um, even after I die. But even deeper than that. that God is ultimately the person who takes care of me. Um, that, that God cares for me. That even if I were to lose everything, God would still be there. So what do you do to help reinforce that? Uh, what I like to do is, is to continue to be generous um, because ultimately uh, my greed it show, betrays my heart's tendency to not trust God, right? The, the way I, I obey fear tells me that I don't, I don't totally obey and trust God. Um, so one of the things I do is I, I try to be generous. Maybe for you, if you, you're finding that to be a similar problem in your soul this week, that take some food to the food bank. Like buy more than you need and don't keep it in your pantry, but give it to somebody else. Um, check on your neighbors and see if there's anything that they need, right? Uh, your neighbors or your circle or, you know, whoever you're in kind of your pod. Um, make a financial donation in a time of uncertainty. Trust God to provide for you and help take care of people in the community. Maybe it's Sunshine Rescue Mission or the, the family, uh, the Flagstaff Family Food Center, or maybe you're just not familiar with the, the nonprofit realm here and you want to give to the church. 10% uh, of everything CCOF takes in goes to directly to local and global partners. Man, um, the reason that Christians give to the church is not because... Um, not because God needs our money, please. God has all the resources ever that, you know, he created it. That money was his to begin with. He gave it to you to be trusted with what he, the reason why he wants us to give it is not for any reason other than our souls flourishing. He, he wants us to move into a place where we totally trust him. I, I hope that today um, you have a wonderful, wonderful Friday. I, I hope that today um, God meets you right where you are and that his presence is totally satisfying and that it leads you into deeper trust and deeper relationship.